Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, pag-uusapan natin kung paano gamitin ang Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient para mahanap ang significant relationship between variables in a study. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient or simply Pearson R ang ginagamit kung ang objective ng study mo ay malaman yung extent to which the variables are related or kung gaano ba naapektuhan ng bawat isang variable yung isa't isa. Or in other words, kung significant relationship yung hinahanap mo dun sa study. Ginagamit din to if the data is parametric, and ito yung kanyang formula. So don't freak out, iisa-isahin natin yung symbol na yan. Yung capital N is the number of data pairs. Since we are doing relationship between variables, we have to pair them. At kung ilang pairs yung meron tayo, that's the value for capital N. Then summation of x, y, ibig sabihin ng x, yun yung mga first data, yung y, yung second data, i-multiply mo lang sila, and then you will get the sum of their product. Then we have here summation of x, ibig sabihin isasum mo yung x, tapos dito isasum mo lahat ng y. Next we have here summation of x squared, ibig sabihin isasquare mo muna yung x, Afterwards, tsaka mo i-add lahat ng x squared. For summation of y squared naman, isa-square mo muna lahat ng y, tapos tsaka mo kukuhanin yung sum. Ang ginagawa dito, isa-square mo muna yung mga x bago mo kuhanin yung sum. Dito naman, isa-summation mo muna bago mo i-square. Same goes with y. Ang ginagawa dito, iwa-y square mo muna, tapos tsaka mo hahanapin yung sum. Pero dito, isa-sum mo muna bago mo i-square. Later, we will do this step by step. So, we have here the table to interpret R. Makikita natin dito sa first column yung iba't ibang possible values for correlation R. So, we have here 0.00 hanggang 0.30. Kung positive man yun or negative, it means very low positive or negative correlation. Negligible. Pag sinabing negligible, parang nagkataon lang yung kanyang correlation or sobrang hina nung relationship ng dalawang variable. Kapag naman natin ginawang 0.30 to 0.50, yan yung nakuha natin value, either positive or negative, ang ibig sabihin naman yan is low positive correlation or low negative correlation. Kapag 0.5 to 0.7, either positive or negative, moderate or sakto lang yung nagiging correlation ng dalawang variable. Pag 0.7 to 0.90, that's high positive correlation or high negative correlation kung negative sila. And yung 0.9 to 1, that's very high, either positive or negative. Pero very rare yung 1.00 na eksakto, yung R. Parang napaka-idea nun. Parang it's so good to be true. Kaya usually kapag ang nakuha mong R is 1.0, parang kinorelate mo yung isang variable sa sarili niya. So, kapag ganon, ibig sabihin may error, kailangan mong balikan yung solution mo, baka nagkaroon ka ng miscalculation. Also, hanggang 1 lang or negative 1 ang value ng correlation. Hindi siya pwedeng mag-exceed ng 1. Hindi siya pwedeng umabot ng 2, 3, 4, or 1.5, or 1.001, hindi pwede yun. Ang maximum value niya lang is 1. Ang minimum value niya is negative 1. Kapag nakuha natin yung R, ang ibig sabihin lang noon ay yung degree of correlation nila. Kung gaano naaapektuhan ng isang variable ang kapair niya. Pag positive, ibig sabihin, uh, more or less kapag tumaas yung isang value, pwede nating masabi na meron ding pagtaas sa kabilang value. Kung negative naman, indirect or inverse yung kanilang relation. Pero kahit na makakita tayo ng relationship between those two variables, it does not necessarily mean na significant yung relationship. What I'm trying to say is after finding R, hindi pa siya sapat para masabi kung significant or insignificant yung relationship. That's why lagi natin kukuhanin yung kanyang p-value. Once you get its p-value, iko-compare mo siya sa alpha. Kapag yung p-value natin is greater than alpha, we have to accept the null hypothesis. Pero kung less than, we have to reject the null hypothesis. 
kung paano isolve tong p-value, ilalagay ko na lang yung link sa description box sa baba for the website na ginagamit ko pang compute ng p-value ng Pearson R. Ang gagawin lang natin dito sa video na to, magko-compute tayo ng Pearson R. Afterwards, we will use that website to get its corresponding p-value. To better understand, let's have the following example. For instance, a researcher wants to determine if there is a certain relationship between the students' grades in algebra and statistics. Kaya nag-interview siya ng sampung studyante, kinuha niya yung grades nila sa algebra at sa stat. Yung naging result ng interview ay nandito sa table kung makikita ninyo. At sasagutin natin kung meron bang significant relationship between these two variables given that our alpha is 0.05. So we set up first this null hypothesis. There is no significant relationship between the students' grades in algebra and in statistics. So again, we will use here the Pearson correlation R. Recall natin na sa Pearson, kailangan merong mga x squared, y squared. So, ayusin natin yung table. Let's set the first variable, grade in algebra, as x, at grade in statistics as y. So, kukuhanin natin yung x squared, yung y squared, at yung xy. So, for x squared, isa square lang natin yung 85. That will result to 7225. As for y, pag in-square natin yung 80, 80 times 80, that is 6,400. And finally, we will multiply 85 and 80, giving us 6,800. Next, we do the same for student 2. We have 90 squared, that is 8,100. Tapos 89 squared, meron tayong 7,921. And for xy, meron tayong 90 times 89. We have 8,010. Do the same for students 3 hanggang student 10. I'll be pausing for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, i-reveal natin yung tamang sagot. Yan. So, after mong makuha yung mga entries dito for student 3 hanggang student 10, ia-add natin lahat per column. So, reveal muna natin yung correct set of values. Yan. You should arrive with these values. And tulad ng sabi ko, ia-add natin lahat ng x, ia-add natin lahat ng y, lahat ng x squared, lahat ng y squared, lahat ng xy. I'll give you another 10 seconds. Titigil ulit ako sa pagsasalita, tapos gawin mo yung sinabi ko. After 10 seconds, i-reveal natin ang tamang sagot. You should arrive with these values. So, ang kailangan lang natin para makuha or makompute yung correlation R, yung Pearson R, ay itong last row, itong mga total. Kaya i-collapse natin yung table para may space tayo pagsasolve, yan lang. Ilalabel natin ito, this will be our summation of X. Ito yung ating summation of Y. Again, when we say summation, ina-add lang natin. This is summation of X squared, this is summation of Y squared. And finally, we have summation of XY. Recall lang natin yung formula. And then for n nga pala, meron tayong 10 student. Isa-substitute natin, for n, meron tayong 10. Ang summation of xy natin ay ito. Tapos, summation of x ay ito. A3, 5, summation of y ito. Yan. So, dito kailangan marunong tayong tumingin ng mga values. Huwag tayong malilito, especially dito sa baba. 10 pa rin yung n. Ang summation of x squared ay ito, 69925. Tapos yung summation of x na 835, ilalagay natin sa parenthesis squared. Ganon din sa y. Ito yung 10 for n. Summation of y squared ay itong 73575. And then itong summation of y na 857, ilalagay natin sa parenthesis squared. 10 times 71649 is this product. 
835 times 857 ay ito. And then 10 times 69925 is 699250. 835 squared, that is 697225. Then we have here 10 times 73575 is 735,750. And finally, we have 857 na naka-squared. We have 734,449. Next, we subtract these pairs of numbers, leaving us with this more simple fraction. So, meron tayong 895, 2025, and 1310. Siyempre, hindi pa ito yung ating final answer. Using your calculators, you can encode this ng derecho. Pwedeng 895, maglagay lang ng parenthesis, tapos divided by square root of. Sa loob ng square root, maglagay ka ng parenthesis, 2025, tapos times 1310. Tapos, syempre, you have equals. You should arrive with R equals 0 0.551. Tandaan, pag R, hindi tayo hanggang second decimal number lang. Pwedeng hanggang third or hanggang fourth decimal number. Pero for the sake of this example, hanggang third decimal na lang tayo. And then, we will interpret this. Recall that 0 0.551 is between 0 0.50 and 0 0.70. And that is interpreted as moderate. Positive ang ating R, kaya moderate positive correlation. But wait, hindi pa nito nasasagot kung significant ba yung relationship between the grades in algebra and grades in statistics. Ang nakuha lang natin ay yung relationship between them, kung gano'n nila naaapektuhan yung isa't isa. Pero hindi pa natin masasabi kung significant ba to or hindi. Para masabi natin or para masagot natin yung SOP sa situation na to, kailangan natin kuhanin ang p-value ng ating R. So, recall natin ang ating null hypothesis. And then, previously, meron tayong R. Tapos, ang N natin is 10 dahil meron nga tayong 10 pairs of grades coming from the 10 students. So, using the link na nilagay ko sa description box, it will lead you to a certain website na tatanungin ka kung ano yung R at kung ano yung N. So, ikiin mo lang itong mga values na nandito. And then, don't forget our alpha is 0.05. Click calculate and then you should arrive with a p-value of 0.0988. Hmm, 0.0988. Mas malaki kaysa alpha. At dahil mas malaki ang ating p-value, we have to accept the null hypothesis and therefore, there is no significant relationship between the students' grades in algebra and in statistics. So, dito makikita natin na kahit moderate na yung kanilang correlation, 0 0.551 yung Pearson R, hindi pa rin yun sapat para masabi na significant yung kanilang relationship. Kumbaga dito, ang mananaig pa rin pagdating sa whether we will accept or reject the null hypothesis, ang masusunod pa rin ay yung p-value, regardless kung napakalaki or napakaliit ng value ng ating R. So that's it kung paano natin gamitin ang Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient to identify whether or not may significant relationship sa dalawang variables na nasa study mo. Thank you for watching. If you learned from this video, please give it a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon. See you on our next video.